Welcome to The Spiritual Man and Nirvana, Selections from Theosophy's Sacred Teachings in The Key to Theosophy, Part 2 of 2, on Words of Wisdom. Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, vegetarian, was born in 1831 into a noble family in Ukraine or Ukraine. As a child, young Helena displayed a gift for clairvoyance, as well as an interest in metaphysical phenomena. Years later, she traveled throughout Europe, the Middle East, and India, studying with various teachers and Sufi saints. Following the guidance of an Indian yogi named Mahatma Moria, vegetarian, Madame Blavatsky co-founded the Theosophical Society. Theosophy, meaning divine wisdom, refers to knowledge that comes through spiritual experience rather than intellectual understanding alone. The Theosophical Society is dedicated to uplifting humanity through a realization of the oneness of life and the wisdom underlying all religions. Madame Blavatsky wrote several important books on Theosophy, including Isis Unveiled, The Secret Doctrine, The Key to Theosophy, and The Voice of the Silence. The Key to Theosophy unlocks the door that leads to a deeper study of Theosophy. In contrast to other Theosophy volumes, it is written in simple explanatory language. Readers are thus able to more easily understand its fundamental principles. Today, on Words of Wisdom, we invite you to join us for excerpts from the Key to Theosophy. On the various postmortem states, the physical and the spiritual man. Theosophist. Immortality as a form is limited only to its life cycle or the Mahaman Vantara, after which it is one and identical with the universal spirit and no longer a separate entity. As to the personal soul, by which we mean the spark of consciousness that preserves in the spiritual ego the idea of the personal I of the last incarnation, this lasts as a separate distinct recollection only throughout the Devachanic period, after which time it is added to the series of other innumerable incarnations of the ego, like the remembrance in our memory of one of a series of days at the end of a year. That alone, which is indissolubly cemented by Atma or Buddhimanas, is immortal. The soul of man or of the personality per se is neither immortal eternal nor divine. Says the Zohar, the soul, when sent to this earth, puts on an earthly garment to preserve herself here, so she receives above a shining garment, in order to be able to look without injury into the mirror, whose light proceeds from the Lord of Light. Moreover, the Zohar teaches that the soul cannot reach the abode of bliss unless she has received the holy kiss or the reunion of the soul with the substance from which she emanated, spirit. All souls are dual. While imprisoned in body, man is a trinity, unless his pollution is such as to have caused his divorce from the spirit. Woe to the soul which prefers to her divine husband or spirit, the earthly wedlock with her terrestrial body, records a text of the Book of the Keys, a hermetic work. Woe, indeed, for nothing will remain of that personality to be recorded on the imperishable tablets of the ego's memory. Inquirer, how can that which, if not breathed by God into man, yet is on your own confession of an identical substance with the divine, fail to be immortal? Theosophist, immortality is but once unbroken consciousness and the personal consciousness can hardly last longer than the personality itself. And such consciousness, as I already told you, survives only throughout Devachan, after which it is reabsorbed first in the individual and then in the universal consciousness. On Nirvana Theosophist, we reject the idea of a new soul created for every newly born babe. We believe that every human being is the bearer or vehicle of an ego having the same age with every other ego. 
because all egos are of the same essence and belong to the primeval emanation from one universal infinite ego. Plato calls the latter the Logos, or the second manifested God, and we the manifested divine principle, which is one with the universal mind or soul. Inquirer, can you give me some instances as a proof of this? Theosophist, most decidedly, I can. Philo Judeus says, the air is full of them, of souls, those which are nearest the earth, descending to be tied to mortal bodies, return to other bodies, being desirous to live in them. In the Zohar, the soul is made to plead her freedom before God, Lord of the universe. I am happy in this world and do not wish to go into another world, where I shall be a handmaid and be exposed to all kinds of pollutions, the doctrine of fatal necessity, the everlasting immutable law, is asserted in the answer of the deity. Against thy will thou become an embryo, and against thy will thou are born. Light would be incomprehensible without darkness to make it manifest by contrast. Good would be no longer good without evil to show the priceless nature of the boon, and so personal virtue could claim no merit unless it had passed through the furnace of temptation. Nothing is eternal and unchangeable save the concealed deity. Nothing that is finite, whether because it had a beginning or must have an end, can remain stationary. It must either progress or recede, and the soul which thirsts after a reunion with its spirit, which alone confers upon it immortality, must purify itself through cyclic transmigrations onward toward the only land of bliss and eternal rest, called in the Zohar the Palace of Love, in the Hindu religion Moksha, among the Gnostics the Pleroma of Eternal Light, and by the Buddhist Nirvana, and all these states are temporary, not eternal. Inquirer, yet there is no reincarnation spoken of in all this. Theosophist, a soul which pleads to be allowed to remain where she is, must be pre-existent and not have been created for the occasion. In the Zohar, however, there is a still better proof. Speaking of the reincarnating egos or the rational souls, those whose last personality has to fade out entirely, it is said, all souls which have alienated themselves in heaven from the Holy One, blessed be His name, have thrown themselves into an abyss at their very existence, and have anticipated the time when they are to descend once more on earth. The Holy One means here, esoterically, the Atman or Atma Buddhi. Theosophist when the spiritual entity breaks loose forever from every particle of matter, substance, or form, and re-becomes a spiritual breath, then only does it enter upon the eternal and unchangeable nirvana, lasting as long as the cycle of life has lasted, an eternity, truly. And then that breath, existing in spirit, is nothing, because it is all, as a form, a semblance, a shape, it is completely annihilated, as absolute spirit it still is, for it has become beingness itself. The very word used, absorbed, in the universal essence, when spoken of the soul as spirit, means union with. For more information, please visit Project Gutenberg, gutenberg.org.